welcome i'm just shaking up my uh cocktail so we can start how is everyone doing well i'm saying everyone i don't know if anyone is online yet okay And today I have to top my cocktail with some soda water. Oops, and I forgot my straw. Oh well. I'll stir it with my garnish. Cheers! Today I made a Tom Collins. It's a very easy... Um, to make a cocktail. It's gin based, lemon juice, and a bit of soda, water. And I'm gonna poke my eye out with that thing. Hmm? Very good, very refreshing. So, um, yeah. I'm so very sorry. Cheers to you if it's evening and you have a drink of soda or whatever. Cheers. Enjoy your evening. And if you're getting up, good morning and cheers with your coffee or tea. Ah, I can't believe it's the second Wednesday of the month already. I'm seriously going to have to be careful with that thing. <laughs> Oh, while I get some cheddar, I will... Ah, there's Hannah. Okay, Francie, see you in a, in 15 minutes. Hi, Mocha. I was going to say I'm going to continue knitting on my sock a little bit, but there you guys are. I am practicing my sock knitting because at the museum, someone asked me if I could help her out with the socks. And I said, of course, but then I realized that um, it had been a while and I need to refresh my, my heel, my heel turn. Um, so that was the best excuse I've ever had to start a new project. <laughs> I've started quite a new, pro a lot of new projects and finished quite some projects uh, these last days, so... Oh, Kim, Mocha, seriously, it's really not that hard, but you have to find the way that fits you and your style. I've learned to knit before I could crochet. I thought crochet was the most complicated thing ever because I had problems with keeping my tension um, even and especially with the... Um, with the trebles and the doubles, um, they would differ sizes. And I found that it was so much easier with your knitting needles because your thread just, or your yarn just, excuse me, stays on your needles unless when you do the yarn over things. But even then, they're always going to be the same, the same length. Well, I used to think that crochet was harder than knitting. I don't know if that helps. <laughs> Um, oh, the work is awesome, Hannah. I would say, isn't it great to be paid to be knitting? But I'm not paid because it's volunteer work. But you get the feeling <laughs> that I can call this work. <laughs> Just sit there and knit. <laughs> Hi, DB. Um, so far, what I did was knit and crochet um a sample with the yarn that they uh dye there they do natural dyeing and i made one sample of uh, 50 grams knit up and i did one sample of 50 grams crocheted up um and did, did different stitches and it's funny because it took me like eight hours to do the knit one and it took me like 45 minutes to do the crochet one <laughs> so it's kind of crazy 
knitting does take a lot more time than than crochet does but i love it, it the people are wonderful um i feel very welcome i feel at home um last week i made um they dye the, the, the yarns in 100 gram skeins and they sell them in 50 gram skeins or hanks and um i just had to make make 50 gram hanks and i didn't mind at all it was fun <laughs> it is a dream job except that you know it's not really a job it's volunteer work but um i mean it's i'm I'm being useful and and doing something and I love that I get to crochet and knit and and so maybe spin just for for you know as a job it's it's awesome. So yeah, but I have to say I only do 4 hours, so it's I go from 10 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. It's only four hours, but I am completely exhausted when I come home and the days after. It takes so much out of me. I never could have foreseen how much it takes out of me. I, I knew I was going to be tired. I knew that it was going to be demanding on my body. But I had no idea that it would hit me so hard. So I am really, really, really happy that I get to build it up so gradually and that they are completely understanding that there is no pressure. There's also never any pressure to 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 be productive, to to be more productive or to be productive. There's no pressure and that is really good. And um yeah, it's really fun, but like I said, just the um, the interaction with all the people and the being busy for four hours, and even though it's, for instance, crochet or knit, which I, I easily do at home, crochet for four hours, it's still, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's demanding, but I love it. Yes, I love how nice the people are. Of course, there are all kinds of people and some people are very warm and chatty and open and others are very reserved, more introverted. And that is fine because I'm more of an introvert myself. But once I feel at home, I become very chatty and I let the crazy out. <laughs> but... But um, at heart, I'm I'm more of an introvert. I, yeah, but and it's such a beautiful environment. I have not yet asked if I could film. I want to. I don't want to be. I don't want to come across the that that is the actual reason why I'm doing that. Um, but. Um, I am gonna film one day and show you guys how wonderful the museum is. It's fantastic. Oh, is Harriet? Oh, hi, Harriet. I'm sorry. Where? Where is Harriet? I didn't see Harriet. Where is Harriet? Oh, that's odd. Hannah, you are confusing me. So how are you guys? What's up um, on your side of the computer? Cheers to those who have not um, seen me pour and hear me cheer you. I am having a Tom Collins today. It's a gin-based cocktail. It's very simple. It's very refreshing. It's, it's pretty good. But I forgot my straw and um, I am going to drink and try not to poke out my eye with my stick thingy which reminds me wasn't um reggie's box of the month things on a stick <laughs> reggie on a stick i know that reggie's on the train probably so um
I am confused. Oh. Mocha, I don't know if this will help. But of course, it's the wrong wrong way around. But knitting is, is really not that hard. I'm going to try to do it. Ooh, I'm going to try to mirror it. So you stick your needle in. How? Oh. Like this. You stick your needle in your stitch like this. You wrap around and then you pull. This is so weird to do it backwards. You pull your yarn through and you drop the rest, but I did it wrong. <laughs> uh, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? So, like this, like this, and then, nope. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop trying to show you because this is really, really not working. Ah, there's Harriet. Hi, Harriet. <laughs> Ooh, which hat? Uh, from the members only? You want to see mine? I think you saw mine on, on the on the live. Here's mine. I love it so much. It is the cutest little summer hat ever. I am not a fan of wearing hats on camera. But this works. This is my summer hat. It was so easy. I ha haven't done the um, uh, magic loop methods yet. Um, but I find it the um, nine inch circular needles very easy. Um, but in this case, I'm doing it on the double pointed needles because that was the method that the colleague wanted wanted to learn. But I have not um, done the magic loop for anything yet. And I have a... I want to say a recipe, but that's not a word. I have a pattern from the crazy sock lady to make a fingerless um gloves or mitts and that's with the magic loop method and that's where we're gonna learn it yeah i love this yarn i don't know if you can see but there are bits and pieces where it's like a little shiny that there's a sheen on it and this yarn is awesome it's um cotton and viscose blend it's not a blend because they're not blended they are um how 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 can i how can i explain this so let me just show you it's a it's a um chain spun it's, it's like these tubes kind of things, like the French knit uh, tubey thingies. So it's a chain spun. And as you can see, this is the cotton. Ah, this is this is showing it pretty, pretty well. So it's the chain spun cotton. And then every, I don't know how many, how many meters, you get a piece that is from viscose, also chain, chain spun, and it gives you that beautiful, shiny texture. The only thing was um, where the viscose and the cotton is connected, where it switches, you get a little bit of a harder and thicker piece of yarn, which 
did sometimes give me a little of a little bit of a the impression of having a knot. Well, this might actually be a knot. No, so, but um, I don't think it's that visible. Yeah, you get some irregular stitches every now and then. So I thought this yarn was a, a total find. Um, we have a store. I think in 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 English it's called like a haber haberdash, like a store where you find everything for sewing and and knitting. Is that correct? Well, it's called Veritas. And um, it's one of the closest things that we have to a um, franchise chain thing for uh, yarns and uh, sewing supplies. Now they sell more uh, costume jo jewelry and, and pantyhose and and things like that these days then that they do fabrics and sewing materials but they used to start as a uh, oh i'm pushing the computer they used to start as a, a button shop so um yeah that's true i'm the only one who really sees the 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 things the not not like uh bumps but i don't mind because it gives a little bit of texture texture and i know why they are there and I don't mind it's not like oh I bought the worst yarn and it has like 20 knots in it that's not it so I bought this yarn at Veritas and they have their own brand they sell um they also sell uh, brands they used to have a lot of Schachemeyer but they seem to be selling them out um I saw that they had some Rowan um, but they are slowly switching to their own brand. And so I am very sorry. I cannot tell you exactly what yarn you could use um, instead of it. I have not seen it anywhere else. But I am sure that Katya maybe must have something like that. And so, yeah, this is called Billy. And I used 100 grams. Um, and, um, I think a three and a half, a three and a half millimeter hook while the, it says that needle size is five millimeters. <laughs> so yeah, my hat is made with Billy <laughs> and I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I did, however, change the border. Um, Reggie has two different border, um, but um, I made the lacy one, and it looked completely wrong on me. It, it's, yeah, it's not my style. It looked so, so wrong on me. So what I did was a back loop only slip stitch. <laughs> and I actually love the border it made. And I think that from now on, whenever uh, a pattern tells me to do a slip stitch around the border, I'm going to do it like this, but um, have um, back loop only because it really, it sits so nicely snug against the previous row instead of on top of it. So there we go. Uh, are the, uh, the gremlins are taking a bad, well, it's a good, oh no, a bad is not a good thing. They're going to multiply. <laughs> Hi, Reggie. <laughs> hey, Sandy, darling. Good morning in Canada. Oh no, Sandy, you're not in Canada. Why am I saying in Canada? You're not in Canada. Well, good morning in the States. Who else is from the States, by the way? Good morning. Um, I have not seen the Lang Yarns Bloom, but actually now that you are mentioning it, these, is that the one, the Bloom with the, with the, the pieces of, um, 
like neps that um stick out and and form like these bloom textures on on your work that would be awesome for this hat reggie we should try that <laughs> welcome back francie yeah of course you are right smack dab in the middle <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have a drink. Cheers. I'm having a Tom Collins. If you want a recipe, it's in the description box. I also put a link to Reggie's Etsy in the description box. You're not going to find this pattern there yet, but you will in a while. But um, today is pretty much also going to be a Reggie show. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, Reggie pattern show. <laughs> so, let's go. Okay, I need to put my head somewhere. Oh, and I'll, uh, that's all I have left over from my my two uh, balls of a hundred grams. I was thinking maybe I could do like a a flower with it or something. Not sure. This is just an itty bitty 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 bit. And the other leftover I have is can I show the 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 hat yet? Or else I only show the the yarn I used, Reggie. Can I show uh can I show the, the beanie? I did a test for Reggie. Mm -hmm. And this is the yarn I have left over. And this is special yarn because, first of all, I want it from Reggie on our channel. And what makes it so special, apart from the fact that I want it, that's okay, I like teasing people. Um, this is hand spun yarn. I don't know if you can see, if you can tell, but this is hand spun yarn. And it has been spun by Sadie from Sadie's Spin Craft. Now, sadly, Sadie stopped her business. She didn't stop spinning, but she's not selling. She's not spinning commercially anymore. So this makes this yarn even more special. And this looks very neon green and pink, which it is. I also had uh, a hank that was um, a little more um subdued like like it had a bit of a wash that made it less bright but still very colorful but just a little more subdued just a little bit well sandy me too and her yarn was amazing to work with it is working with yarn like this is just exciting because you see the colors change and you never know what's going to come but I could have never guessed how beautifully this yarn would work up. I loved the colors and I loved the yarn as it was. But once I started crocheting with it, it blew my mind. It absolutely blew my mind. And I'm, I have permission to show it. I did a pattern test for Reggie, but the pattern is not going to be out in months. <laughs> For a few months. And this is. Look at that ombre. Look at the the way these colors just made the most beautiful fade. And then working in the row also. I am completely in love with this colorway. This, I have never been, I have never used a yarn that was this fun and, and exciting to work with because the colors kept on changing. I don't think there's a lot of, of colors that are the same because there's always little change. Pink and neon green, but I love green and pink. So this was the more subdued one. And then I made the top with the 
flashy one. I think this is where I switched. This was the last of the subdued one, and this is all the bright one. But you can't tell because they, they blend perfectly. So it was a fun pattern. It was fantastic yarn. This is not going to work with my... with my bun although and I love the hat I love it and whether I want more green or pink I just have to twist it a little bit yeah I need a pom-pom I actually have um but I have to order it um I could try to make a pom-pom with the leftover yarn <laughs> There you go, I have a pom-pom. <laughs> I just I just cannot move much. <laughs> Hi Catherine, welcome in. The yarn is amazing. Okay, so this is my pattern test. Just have a <laughs> keep an eye out for it in a few months. It will be in Reggie's shop. Hey, Christine! Welcome, welcome! Hi! Yeah, um, it's more like of a sit-still kind of beanie, but I'm not a kind of a sit-still kind of girl, am I? <laughs> so, I still have quite a bit of this beautiful yarn left, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. It is... Um, It is definitely something I need to make something with. Maybe flowers also. Mm. Yeah, a bit of color work. But the thing is, this text, the texture of this yarn is so special. You cannot compare it to... Um, <laughs> oh, um, you cannot compare that with a machine spun yarn. I wish you could feel it. I wish I could make you feel how different it feels. Look how evenly it's spun. I am in awe of her um, handicraft. Well, hello there, sweet thing. Alison's in the house. Have has anyone of you seen the ladies' man? I know it's a absolute unknown movie, and it is a bit over the top, but oh, it's one of my favorite movies because it's really it's just I find it just so absurd and funny. Um but um he's he's a ladies man and um he calls all the women all the women he meets and has sex with or just basically every woman he meets he calls her sweet thing <laughs> he has a little bit of a lisp as well which makes it yeah special so sweet thing makes me think of the ladies man <laughs> he's a um radio star that gets that has a late night show and he gets fired because he is too explicit and then he has to find a new job so this is my i don't think it has a name yet beanie and maybe if you are lucky and got the april club you might get the pattern <laughs> Bikini. <laughs> Random question. Anyone know how to repair a dent in wood? My dad. Ooh. Oops. So the drill fell on the floor. I I know you can um you can buy wood paste. I did with furniture. Well, there you go. <laughs> Put the rug on. 
<laughs> hey Kim, hi. <laughs> well, I drink to that. That is top answer from Reggie today. Cheers, Reggie. Oh. Okay, so this was item number two from Reggie. Item number three from Reggie. <laughs> the February edition, was it February? The, the club was work naked, it was February. The work naked day um, yarn club had this beautiful yarn from Little Bish Stitches. And I absolutely love this colorway. It reminds me of autumn of fallen leaves, of potpourri, of spices, and it's, I, I love it. I love this colorway, and this is a very, very me color. And um, I've been wanting to make myself a slouchy head in uh, for ages and um i'm always looking for a good excuse to get my knitting needles out but uh, it was my favorite of the two patterns i loved how it looked it was so so fun to make and um i've worn it a lot already i love it i don't know if i'm showing it properly that i love it i and it's so soft it's so soft it's so soft <laughs> you get a feeling you use me as a tester too often there's no such thing as too often well thank you thank you well i if i do say so myself i like it as well and i forgot it downstairs but this goes perfectly with my heart shrug from mocha it is it's like they've been made to go together so um yeah i'm gonna take this sock off my off my uh, lap oh yeah i showed the sock i am knitting this um yarn is drops and um i like the regia um sock wool but the drop sock wool is even better it's fantastic for those who wants to see the label it's the drop fable um i had no idea that it would pattern like this it's like a self patterning it, it it looks like i made an effort it looks like i actually put work in this well all i did was knit in the round <laughs> yarn coitus <laughs> no i would call this yarn coitus <laughs> uh, uh, oh, i i can help it but the word coitus will always make me think of sheldon and no one else <sighs> drops is seriously when you when you feel the yarn the drops it it, it might give you the feeling that it's a bit rustic. Once you start working with it, it becomes really soft. Um, I made a pair of socks for my dad. Um, and I was amazed um, of how soft the, the end result was. So I am completely sold on drops now. I will buy them... Um, I will buy them blindly online because i know that it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic <laughs> yeah and then you immediately want to say please stop saying coitus no i like the word coitus <laughs> yeah i haven't washed it yet but i am sure that after you washed it it, it is gonna be super soft yeah i love sheldon cheers to everyone who came in And thank you for the thumbs up. I am drinking a Tom Collins. Um, you are welcome. Um, that is also something that um, I really 
light because buying yarn online is hard because you have to take the plunge if you want to know what it feels like you have to order it and it can be very disappointing but if you have people online that um, have reviewed yarns and that especially if they have reviewed yarns that you know and that you feel the same way about that yarn um, then you know that you're going to have the same opinion on other yarns. And if they say something, well, you can take their word for it. I like that. Like, that's why I really appreciate good yarn reviews. Oh, I'm sorry, Alice. I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing, but I would say that it's a bad thing. Uh, yeah, drops on Rito and go to uh, Reggie's. Uh, YouTube because she has affiliate links. Yeah, feed the dogs, Hannah. See you later. Also, I could give Reggie a hand modding. What is modding? I don't know. Please explain, Alice. Okay, he's sweet in its own way. Ah, okay, a hand. Oh, yes, okay. I was wondering what a hand modding was. You could give her a hand modding. Okay, thank you. Oof. It's been a very hectic day today. <laughs> um, I don't know, have we had trolls yet? Um... That's okay, Alice. It's not you. It's me. It's my brain. Like, pfft. what is she saying? Well, it's really not that hard what you what you wrote, but my mind went somewhere else. Um, I'll try to remember after the live stream because I cannot change that during the stream. I think I have to go in my in my settings. Ah, you just want a blue dress, huh? Yeah, it's um, it's funny. Um, I'm. I don't do many chats, but the chats I do go to regularly, uh, I I, most often I'm a mod there as well. <laughs> so whenever I get on a chat where I'm not blue, I don't see my own name because it's not blue and I my my I just <laughs> just uh, don't recognize my own name when it's not in blue <laughs> oh oh Oh, yes, Reggie, but I'm going to have to show you on the on on my phone. I finished the dragon, the black and white dragon and it was fantastic. It was so beautiful in the monochrome, but I already it already went out for adoption. It went to its forever home. But I can show you the pictures. So, Okay, this is annoying. Um, so I decided he or she needed to have blue eyes. Yes, he is gone already. Well, yeah, it was a birthday present for uh, January 13 was the birthday. So look at him. Look at him. He was so beautiful. I really, really like... Here Here you see the scales, the color changes. I really liked it. Okay, so love at the end of the sentence makes it more of a, of a Scots thing. I, it also reminds me of Alf in Home and Away, so it's also an Australian thing, really. 
and here I am wearing it. <laughs> if you want the pattern, the link is in the description box down below. It's a pattern from Cottontail and Whiskers. And they have a pattern. I need to get it. They have a pattern to make a bag with the head of the dragon with just a little bit of the scales on top. So pretty. So pretty. I'm going to get it. And I talked about them last time. And they also have an amigurumi pigeon with a slice of bread around his neck. <laughs> and a, um, um, a dissected frog on a pin board. Things like that. Really check them out. It's, 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 they have wonderful patterns. And speaking of wonderful patterns for amigurumi. My friend and teacher, she's my painting teacher. Yeah, that pigeon, that pigeon is definitely gonna be made. I I I, I can not tell you when, but I'm gonna make that pigeon. <laughs> um okay, so my 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 teacher and friend Natalie, which is my um painting teacher. By the way, I finally finished my painting. It's been waiting for three years to get this finishing touch, but I finished it. Um, so back to Natalie. Natalie um, asked me last year if I could make that dragon shawl for her daughter. And I did, and I had a lot of fun. And now... Um, she sent me another picture of a Vincent van Gogh doll in Amigurumi. And she asked me, do you think you could make this? And I said, yeah, if I find a pattern, I can make it, of course. I found a pattern. And it was by... I forgot the name. Oh, it's a French name. Hold on just a second. Um... Amour Fou Crochet, yeah, that's it. Amour Fou Crochet. She is on Etsy and I put the, yes, Amour Fou. I put the link in the description box down below. And she has the most beautiful Amigurumi celebrity doll patterns. She has, you name it, scientists and artists and movie stars and um politicians and as long as they are kind of interesting physically she has it. there's Einstein and there's Da Vinci there's Marilyn Monroe and Charlie Chaplin there's um uh, there's RBG there's the Queen um they are so adorable and the pattern was fantastic it was easy to follow and I am so happy with Vincent. Look, he has what ear. I know it's a bit. He only cut off a little piece of his ear. Not his whole ear. But look, he only has one ear. And he has a bandage. <laughs> and look at the details. There's like this tiny little sunflower. I loved making it. And there he is. He is so cute. And this is for her granddaughter. She's four and she's already a Vincent van Gogh fan. And she's going to love it. I loved making it. Stay safe. Oh, that Catherine. Oh, no. Oh, Catherine. I hope you're safe. Right, the women in history, yes. Um, there's Mary Curie, but there's also Jane Austen. There's uh, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, they, 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 they have. Of course, she has most beautiful patterns, and also they are available in like five different languages, I think. So I love making Vincent, and all these projects I showed you were actually very fast in between projects which was fantastic because I've 
been dragging my feet a little bit lately because it just sometimes when you have too many large projects you kind of lose your crojo a little bit and when I'm crocheting I want to be knitting when I'm knitting I want to be crocheting get it so I am very happy with you Vincent I think actually the hardest part was to embroider his beard hmm well, I can't, I cannot even try to imagine the noise it must, and, and how creepy that noise must be, Catherine, really stay safe. Yeah, so, okay, Um. this was actually only the second time, and actually maybe the first time I actually finished an amigurumi, so... And there is another thing is amigur amigurumi is really demanding on your hands because it's really tight stitches. But I used the Rico uh, cotton and for his the, the skin color was the Scapius, um what is it called? Katona? Cat Scapius Katona for, for the, the skin color and the this was all um the Rico Amigurumi cotton and it really wasn't that hard to work with so I noticed that the yarn you use also makes a big difference. Yeah I agree he is so flippin' cute. <laughs> yeah he needs a starry night blanket oh that would be cool or or like a starry night scarf no so that's Vincent. I'm very proud of Vincent. I'm very proud. Also, he has um he has a pretty cool hat. I have not tried to drop cotton yet. So far, I've only tried to drop wools. Yes, um Yes, I can imagine the acrylic is softer on your hands. I actually do have a tiny sampler. A tiny sampler bag of Amigurumi acrylics from Ice Yarns. I have not tried it yet. So far, I've only used the cotton, and like I said, the Ricos, they come in the small little balls, and um, the um, Scapius, they come in 100 gram balls, um, unless when you buy these beautiful variety packs, oh, they're so rewardy, like these big boxes with all the different kind of colors and tiny balls. So pretty. I should be well done with I'm I'm not understanding you again. Maybe it is you, Alice. <laughs> no. Okay, what else did I do this month? There's only one almost finished object and another work in progress. Okay, so this one I have showed a few times. It was, I think, what was it, January? Reggie, help me. January's uh, members only project. Okay, so I finally reached the length I want it and now I'm ready to start on the border so this is an almost finished project I was just hesitating whether I wanted to go further up until I reached the same uh, yellow orange pink bit or if I would just stop here. What do you guys think? Should I go for symmetry or not? But to be honest, this bit is not perfectly symmetri symmetrical as um, it, it 
This bit isn't perfectly symmetrical either. So, okay, I swear, it's not a Tom Collins. It's just been a busy day. <laughs> I was going to say, Alice, your vote doesn't count. <laughs> and if Angela was in, her vote wouldn't count either because you guys have OCD. <laughs> Well, thank you. I uh, thank you, DB. I really am gonna I'm um, gonna check out the the drops cottons. Absolutely, I love working with them, with the with the wool. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love working with the with the cottons. <laughs> Alice got distracted. Wood repair videos. Be careful where you type in wood repair. No, this yarn, actually, I've had this conversation, well, conversation, it was really, it's not like we've talked about it for hours, but I was talking about this with, um, with uh, Reggie, I need to find a word to describe this, you know how I, always say like it's no use hoarding your yarns because you want they're too special um they're too special you're afraid to use them my opinion is let the yarn speak to you and fulfill its destiny it it the yarn needs to fulfill its destiny if you store it somewhere it it will never reach its destiny and I want to find a word that describes when, like, these two. This yarn was very special. Very special to me, very special in general. And when Reggie asked if I had time to do a pattern test and she described what I was talking about the yarn and all of a sudden I said, hey, I was talking. I, I'm going to use that yarn, a very special yarn. And then I got this result that was so magical, especially when I started on the border and, and, and I got this beautiful fade and then I got this beautiful blend. This, a word to describe this, that the yarn has reached its destiny. You found the perfect project for it and this yarn will never be used for anything better than for this perfect project it's like this project was made for this yarn i want a word to describe when the yarn has fulfilled its destiny <laughs> yarn fulfillment yeah but it's kind of I'm not up so far. Yarn destiny, yarn destination, your fulfillment. That's just not, it's not it. It's not it. It is a blissful match, absolutely. And it gives you gratification. Okay, so don't mind me rambling on about yarn destiny. Um, For the border, I was just going to use the same yarn. I had to doctor this yarn um, to to get somewhat of a, a good result. So I have chunks chunks of this yarn left over, and most it's mostly it's pink and orange. So I'm gonna use the pink and orange, not the blue, to do the border. But Francie is voting no border. This yarn is also a good example of fulfilling its destiny. I've had this yarn forever. This is vintage almost. And it's just so perfect for this stitch. I don't know. It's 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 destiny. I tell you, it's destiny. 
I think this yarn, oh yeah, that might work. And then and then you see how perfectly the, the yarn and the project match. And I don't know. It's it's magic. It's it's seriously the universe working working its best. Wonders. Look at the shiny, shiny. Bling, 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 bling. Yeah, I know you're waiting for the pictures, Reggie. I'm sorry. And I can't wait to make one with mohair. Uh-oh. Reggie, people don't want a border. You you put all that work in making a border <laughs> for nothing because people don't want it. <laughs> uh, it is just so pretty. And you would think that the sparkle would make it make it rough, but it's not. Right? It's like a it's like a a sunset on the beach. It's like a, a cocktail. It's like a wearable cocktail. <laughs> exactly, Reggie. I'm sorry. But the people have voted. <laughs> it should not have a border. <laughs> but maybe the people don't know how beautiful it's going to be with the border. <laughs> I don't even know what the border is yet. I haven't even looked at it. But in in any case, I really even though probably the after the half double crochet, the triple crochet or the treble crochet is the stitch I like doing least. I don't like doing picots either and popcorn. I've grown to I've grown to like them, but I'm still not a big fan of the popcorn. But this is all treble crochet. And I really didn't mind because, you know, it was, this stitch is such a, a fast stitch. You see your, your, your piece growing so fast. It's not a blanket. It's a wrap, Alice. Seriously. It's a wrap. But, of course, you couldn't see that because I probably didn't hold it high enough. See, it's a it's a wrap. This would this would actually be nice for a blanket as well. Even if it has holes, it's still gonna be warm. I agree, DB. It's the best combination because it's it's it a color changing yarn is addictive. Period. It's like, okay, I'm gonna work to the next color change. Uh, oh, I want to see what's next. And then before you know it, it's two o'clock in the morning. And you're not even tired anymore because you've pushed past your, <laughs> your, um, your bedtime. At least that's how it works with me. So that's basically it for crochet and knit. And then I have patchwork. Well, it's not patchwork, but it is. I made it in patchwork class. And I still have a few to go, but look at the pretty flowers. I don't know if you recognize that's the thing that usually hangs where the where the painting is. Um, this originally was meant to be put in a wreath, but I decided I am going to be different, as always. I need to do things my way, and what I did is I sewed the flowers to a clothespin the pretty little flowers and then I'm just gonna attach them this way and I can easily remove it and easily add 
And I'm gonna hang it back on my wall, but probably next to the painting. So this is um, why water is so narrow. My blanket, why my blanket was so narrow or the flowers. <laughs> Okay, so this is my, um, this is actually also a work in, pro in progress, but um, I'm not rushed. Because right now my painting is hanging there. It has waited three years to be finished. <laughs> so it needs to be in the spotlight a little bit. <laughs> um, there's actually a story behind that painting. It was a workshop. Um, Well, my class is it's oh such a long story. My friend Natalie, who is my teacher, um, used to have a art supply store, and she gave painting lessons in her store. Now she only does the painting lessons without the store anymore because she um, sold her store and. She's only doing private lessons, but we are doing the painting classes in very small groups. Um, when it was still at the store, it we used to be sometimes be 12 to 20, but now we're only in small groups of six to eight people because it's at her place and it's in Bruges. So it's like private lessons. She has a very specific uh, way of teaching. And... Um, it's a very personalized um, road that you follow when you do hard courses. So the, f the one thing we all have to do is do a, um, a study of colors. We start out with only a few tubes of paint. And in the basic colors, we have two yellows, a warm and a cool one, two reds, a warm and a cool one, and four blues, because you have two warm and two cool blues. And you get to, to learn, you get to know the paints, you get to know the pigments, you get to know the paints, you get to know how they influence each other and we had to do we have to do a study of colors where starting from the primary colors we create all colors and i should have thought of this i should have brought my um my book my color sample book but it's downstairs and then once you understand how to make colors and you have Basically, you have your reference sheets. Um, you have to paint a still life of ap apothecary bottles. Now, when I started, the bottles were in high demand and I painted apples. I'll try to remember to... I can show you the apples on my phone, but painting is also downstairs. Um, I had a yellow and a blue apple on a on a blue gray background and that's basically how she teaches you um she gives you the subject she gives you the color the color charts and then she's like okay just paint what you see just go ahead you you see the bottles put them on put them on your canvas and that was pretty intimidating because i didn't know where to start i cannot draw that's one of my that's one of the things I regret is I have no talent for drawing. Uh, what my I see, my fingers don't want to shake out of the pencil. It doesn't work. I can make sketches and they're, they're not half bad, but I cannot draw. So I was like, yeah, but how do I start? And, and her advice was, well, just paint what you see. And I was, what? But I did it. I did it. And I blew my own mind. Yeah, that was that was something. 
And then um, she gives you um, assignments. Everyone gets the same assignments, but how you work your assignment, how you translate the assignments to painting is completely different for everyone. Um, and even though we get the same assignments, we all get very different paintings, and I love that. And um, this one is my spring from the Four Seasons. But, for instance, my friend Wendy, she is making a beautiful sceneries, like winter scenery and spring scenery, very detailed, very... Um, a photo photographic paintings so it's very different and yes i've been painting for 10 years and i still find that i am i'm reasonably talented but i would not call myself a painter <laughs> um i get frustrated so it does stop me i i get really frustrated that i cannot um that I cannot get it right when I'm drawing. But when you paint, you can just add layers and layers to it until you reach what you want. And that is a big difference. And that I then that is something I, I enjoy doing. But with the drawing, I I can I cannot get there. Yes, it's absolutely. Um, Ella says it's the same with crochet, isn't it? Everyone can have the same pattern, and it turns out uh, with, uh, but turns out differently with each crochet. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, muscle memory. Yes. Also, I agree. It's very. It's more important that you're actually doing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. There is no such thing as perfection. Actually, there's something I want to say about that. But let me have a drink first. Well, if you are a perfectionist, um, you um, you. have to stop painting at some point when you're making a painting at some point you have to say okay i'm done when you're a perfectionist you're never going to reach that point never um yeah perfection is overrated but it's it goes deep i mean it's like your ocd um it's it, their family it's you have to learn to let go of a certain image, a certain goal, and appreciate that at a point, it's not going to get any better. And if you continue adding stuff or painting over it, you're going to end up ruining it. So you have to learn to accept that at a certain point, what you have is good enough. And that is very hard for perfectionists. And it's really something I had to learn. And it's still something we laugh with because I have um, fellow painters that we tell each other, you have to let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let go of it. <laughs> and that is especially true when you work from a picture. Because I, of course, I use pictures to base uh my my work on and to get ideas but you have to let go of that picture and then eventually make it your own thing and it's also the same thing with crochet it's the same thing with um music you have to put some of yourself in it you can use you can use something as a reference point but ultimately what's most important is that you enjoy the process and that you make it yours yours it's the same with patterns <laughs> it's treatable but it does require work absolutely it requires to be aware so the awareness of of the fact that you're doing it is very important yeah 
No. Yes, and I totally understand you, uh, Alice, because I'm the same way. If I know from the start that I'm not going to be able to do it the way I want to do it, I'd rather not do it. So... Exactly, exactly. When that's that's how how Hannah says it. it's it's and the work when it's the best you can do at that time. I mean, I could be adding frills and bits to to this to this jacket and and maybe add some stripes to his pants, but is it gonna make it any better? No, I think this is the best it can look. Um. I think that is that is a very important thing in life. You have to stop at a certain point. I can show you other pictures I made. I can show you an example of something that didn't turn out the way I liked it. Oh no, if I get up, you see the mess behind me. <laughs> Okay, this one was not supposed to be blue and green. <laughs> it was to, supposed to be all ochre, ochre and um, and um, uh, what, what do you call them? Um, earth, earthy colors. Um, it's based on star anesthesia. And it was supposed to be a blown up version of a star anesthesia. And I did not like it. I thought it was horrible. I, And then, you know, I just decided, you know, what I'm trying to do is not working. Let's do something that does work for you. Do something in your style. And this, this is my style. I can actually, I don't know if I still have the pictures of... Um, Oh, I don't know if I still have the pictures of what it was before I overpainted it. Also, that is a very important thing, is you have to be able to, if you're not liking it, what's the, what's the point of continue working on something that you absolutely don't like? Frog it and start over, uh, put some gesso, which is like a white paint, like a primer, put a primer over it and start over. Keep what you like and get away, uh, do away with what you don't like. And I think that's a very important thing in life in general. Why, thank you. I like my. Um... <laughs> well, it will muddy at least, Hannah. The 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 color will 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 muddy. Okay, Reggie. Bye bye. Ha enjoy dinner if you still have to eat. How many gremlins are you left with? <laughs> okay. Um, the thing is, I cannot remember. This is an old painting. I cannot remember how far I have to go in my in my phone. No, I erased it. Well, this is when I started painting it over. I try to make like an opal thingy, but I didn't like that either. So I ended up doing this um, fade. So this this painting has ah, there it is. Okay, this is what it looked like. And when I look at it now, I'm thinking, well, it wasn't really that bad, but I really did not like it at all. Like I said, when I see it now, it's not too bad. But now, I also see that there's a lot of dust on my painting and now on my t-shirt. Um, but now I like it. So yeah, I don't even remember how we got to the subject. <laughs> oh. 
on some paintings I worked for a year. Um, and then others just like went so fast. I can also do, um, how do you call it in English? Um, <sighs> realism. I can do realism. My favorite subjects being cats. And I really enjoyed making these little ones. Cat, cat, cat close-ups. But these are pretty much a copy from a picture. So there's really not that much of me in there. This is just copying a picture. So, um... I cannot draw. See, that's what I was. I that's what I was. That's why I needed to take. I cannot draw. Give me a pencil and paper, and I cannot rep reproduce this. But give me painting, and I can reproduce the picture. Isn't that odd? Yeah. See, but that's the thing. Probably not even charcoal. But that is, the, that is the funny thing about me. I wish I could draw things like that. I cannot. But with... Um, yeah. She reminds me... This is probably the hardest one. This was probably the hardest one to paint. Because black isn't black. It's not. It's really not. When you look at black, if you really, really look at something that's black, it's not black. So basically when you when you paint something black you have to pay the light that you see reflected on on the on the thing. Well, it's blue or it's brown or it's dark red or it's purple but it's never black. Here it's brown. It's more uh, some some sort of brown grayish brown. And this one really looks like my JD. My cat. So yeah, no, I can, I, I can paint. I cannot draw, <laughs> and I cannot play an instrument except for the recorder. <laughs> oh, but hey, I mean, you cannot be perfect in everything. <laughs> No, I had to accept that it was not my talent. Also, I did not have the patience to do the music studies. We had to do like the... <laughs> the recorder counts. Yeah, but nobody nobody actually wants you to play the recorder. <laughs> I actually wanted to... There were two instruments I wanted to learn how to play, and it was the piano, and it was the flute. But um, the piano, it's a mindfuck. My brain just, my hands and my brain, it's doing one thing with one hand, doing something else with your other hand. And at the same time, have your brain look at the sheet paper. No, no, nope, nope. My brain, <laughs> brain says no. <laughs> and computer says no, absolutely not. But I really enjoyed playing the recorder, but also even I could, I could read a little, I could read a little bit of music, a little bit. But um, I played by ear. I could actually, I was actually pretty good at playing by ear, and I still have good pitch, and I really enjoy music. But I, I, I accept it. I don't have the talent. I've tried playing guitar once. It hurt my fingertips because of the fibromyalgia. Um, my my boyfriend, he, he used to be a bass player. And he taught me. He taught me about bass, 
And now I am listening to music differently and I really, really, really enjoy it even more. But like I said, I it's I I've I have accepted that um it's not my talent and I'm fine with just playing guitar hero. Not even on expert level. I do not get past medium level, even when you go to the hard level where you have to use your pinky finger, it doesn't I, I can't. So <laughs> I've accepted it. I'll paint, I'll crochet, I'll sew, I'll spin and um everything you want, but I'll listen to music made by other people. <laughs> oh, I know, Alice. I like I said, I don't have the talent and and that's fine because I don't have the time either. So Thank you, Francie. So like it's it's um Yes, everyone can build on a skill. I do agree, but if you have the talent, you have the talent. You can learn all you want, but you will never reach the same height as people that have this natural um, flair for it. Exactly. And, and I have a lot of time, but, uh, you know... What is talent? Yes. But for me, talent is something that comes natural to you. If it feels like an effort, it's not a talent. But I also do agree that whether you have the natural ability to do something or not, if you want to do it, it should not keep you from not doing it. I think everyone should be allowed to do whatever they want. Unless we're talking about singing, because some people really should not be singing. Yes, I said it. I, like I said, I have good pitch, but I cannot stand people singing off key. It drives me nuts. And um, right now, here on the radio, on Radio 1, um, there is the uh, top 1,000 of the classic songs. Classics. And unfortunately, there's a lot of Neil Young in there. And dude was a talented, talented songwriter, but he cannot sing. He hurts my ears. He sings off-key, and I can't stand it. Okay, rant over. <laughs> yes, some things do come naturally, Alice. Oh, yeah, of course. But that first time you try, you notice whether it comes with ease or if it's hard, right? You have to admit that. A bugbear? Is that like a... Is that like an Irish way of saying a pet peeve? My mother was an artist. She had only one talent. It was like she had to do this. I don't believe people only have one talent, though. Now, I think we can all do a lot of things. <laughs> but I don't know if it comes straight from the womb. I don't think they ever try to have us a newborn play an instrument. No, what I mean with when it comes naturally is when you have an affinity for it and when like when you don't feel like you have to make a huge effort to do it. I'm not saying everybody has a learning curve. Everybody has a learning curve. But um, like Mocha saying, 
she cannot knit. She can absolutely not knit that one day she's going to learn how to knit. Well, there are people that are convinced that they can not knit. They won't never be able to, to knit. And I am convinced that everyone can learn how to knit. You can learn the technique. You can learn the movements. You can even build a muscle memory. But you will never become someone who picks up needles and yarn and just designs a sweater out of the blue. That is natural talent, an affinity for something. Yes, you can learn the technique, but you can be a fantastic piano player and you can learn the technique but if you don't have that natural talent you are never gonna win the queen elizabeth uh, or what's her name a contest here in belgium so there's a difference there is skill it's a, it's it's a different in skill level and that's fine because not everybody needs to be a uh, virtuoso and not everybody needs to be um highest talent the most important thing is that you have fun that you enjoy doing what you do okay thank you for being here db have a good evening yes actually hannah i'm curious also what did your mom do we were born singing well yeah if you want to, well the kind of singing that neil young does <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't think it has to do with learning quicker. I think it really has to do with having more of that je ne sais quoi. No, I'm not talking magic. It's Some people are made... See? Some people are made for long long distance running. Some people are made for explosive uh, sprints. And the difference there is actually there is a different way to the, the the they have different muscle built. No, I really think that it's it might actually be in your DNA. I, but no, I don't want to make it something magical. No. No. And no one, even someone with the best natural ability, no one will reach the top without a lot of practice and a lot of even failure. But um, no one will reach that without practicing that skill thoroughly. That's a given. That's a given. Uh, I don't know. It is the nature versus nurture. Um, I think nurture has a big influence, but there are certain things that you cannot deny that we have in 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 our DNA, like, but then again, also, we tend to um, see certain traits when we want to see them as well. Oh, Goldsmith, huh? Yes. Um, a very hard trade as well. Yes. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's also opportunity is also a very big factor. Um, if you don't get the opportunity, you're not gonna be able to to grow your skills um 
like if 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 you were from a poor family and you didn't have access to instruments and you had to go to work because otherwise you would have no food you didn't have time or possibility to to work on your skills well then you would never become the next mozart or beethoven no matter how talented you were so yeah um, but i think it's a very interesting subject and yes you can learn you can learn techniques but there is this um i think it's part of nurture but i think oppor opportunity um it's not the same as nurture mhm mm I agree, Francie. Um, I like, I actually do love seeing the, the evolution of artists and the learning curve. And sometimes I like the more am amateuristic, the more naive work better than the professional a polished work um for me uh, for instance musicians where i like their early music better than their later music that is praised by all the experts and all the people in the business but where where it feels like it's not them anymore where the the, the more clumsy beginning period is it's more it feels like it comes more from the heart and it doesn't come out of wanting to make money with it. I, yeah, I very much feel that way, Francie. I am very sorry that you lost your mom, Hannah. How old was she and how old were you when you lost her? I lost my mom when she was 55 and it's, um yeah it's the hardest thing ever um i get chills because i love success story from people who started from scratch and became very famous in their art and their skill oh wow see oh i'm so sorry hannah that is so young I bet you miss her a lot because I know how I miss mine a lot. Um, but I am very happy that she got to become famous with what she like, what she loved doing. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, it's gonna be sixteen years for me now, so. But it still feels, it still feels um, like yesterday. <sighs> but I am so excited to hear that she was a famous goldsmith because, uh, of course, you could, you, you, you could have guessed it that I uh, dabbled into silversmithing a little bit. But I had to stop when I stopped when my mom got sick because it was too much to work full time to go to evening school and to um, help at, at the um, at the store. But I really loved silversmithing. Oh, yeah! I never tried goldsmithing because I mean I don't have the money. But um, I really loved soldering and then and stretching the the silver and 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 making wire and making plates and all. Oh, it was so fun, so fun, so fun. It is a great privilege, Francie, and I hope that he is in good health and that you get to really enjoy each other's company. I still have my dad, of course, and he is he's good. He gave me a few scares already, but I'm very happy to still have him around. I cherish him very much. Hi, Marymel. Welcome. 
Uh, yes, let's talk about our talents. So I want to know, uh, Hannah, did you inherit any of your mom's jewelry skills or passion for the thing? That's another thing. Um, isn't it funny how when your parents have a certain passion or talent, yeah, I said it, um, that the kids either follow in their footsteps or absolutely dislike what their parents did it's it's i feel like it always it's it's always either one way or the other it's um my mom was fantastic um uh, with with flowers and 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 plants, she had a green thumb, something unbelievable. She's also a seamstress. She 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 did that as a as a job. Uh, she never, we never, um, actually got to her teaching me how to sew with a machine. <laughs> she taught me how to knit. My mom was the one who told me how to knit. She could not crochet, so she didn't teach me how to crochet, and she never taught me how to sew, which is very ironic because I only learned after she after she passed. But um, that's because she ended up hating sewing because the only thing that was that she ever did was repair uh, ripped seams or buttons or zippers, and she hated that. And oh my gosh, do I understand how much she hated doing that. <laughs> do you guys have things like that? Like um, parents that your uh, skills or, or, or talents that your parents had that you, you learned after they were gone or that they never taught you because they, they ended up hating whatever they the trait that they learned ah love for singing nice i like to sing and my boyfriend michiel says that i'm not a bad singer but you will not catch me singing karaoke in public or something like that i sing in the car all the time and at home also but no i won't sing in public That's nice. My mom never played an instrument. Um, my mom, they were seven children. And I know that my grandmother has always been very, very bitter that she wasn't allowed to learn an instrument from her very strict father. And she always dreamed of playing the piano, but she wasn't allowed to. And she was very bitter about that. So none of the children got to learn an instrument either. And my grandmother's brother went the other way. They were a very musical family and all the children had to learn at least one instrument. Isn't that funny? I sing with Reggie, yeah, yeah, Reggie sings, but um, have I sang, have I sang with, 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 uh, with Reggie on her channel? Hmm. Not really. <laughs> Hi, Lashira. <laughs> Lashira, do you prefer me to say Lashira or do you prefer me to say Sharida? I've been meaning to ask you. <laughs> I'm not gonna do a Backstreet Boy. Don't even think about it. And also, I was a take that girl. Boo, Backstreet Boys. No. No Backstreet Boys for me. Okay, Alashira. No, I was a take that girl. Oh, boy. I like Mark and Howard. Yeah. I was the perfect age. I was like 15 or something when they split. I was so sad. But that was the perfect um, uh, demography for the for that group. <laughs> well, it depends on your definition of singing. True, but it, it also depends on this on the song. 
But the thing is, I am always singing, at least in my head. I always have a song in my head. I am always singing. When the when the music is on, I am singing. And though I have no more fear of speaking in public, I have no problem doing presentations, but I don't know how I would feel if I would have to sing in public. That's a very, very different thing. <laughs> and again, depends on your definition of singing. Right, Neil Young? <laughs> What do I do all the time? Speak in public? I'm gonna eat my cherry. <laughs> oh boy, I love Irish pubs. I'm not really... I've not really ever been a party girl going out... Um, going out um, to pubs and, and to clubs. But hi, Chris! Uh, or pubs. But I really... The, 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 what I really enjoyed doing was going to the Irish pub. There was one Irish pub near where I, I used to live, where I grew up. And... Um, no, but see, that's the thing. You're not, first of all, I cannot dance. I cannot dance. I feel awkward. I cannot dance. Um, and an Irish pub is safe. You don't have to. No one does. You can just hang, drink, talk, tell jokes. And if you must play pool or darts, it's, it's a perfect place. And also, I love Kilkenny and cider. I do not like Guinness. It's overrated. There, I said it. <laughs> I can't talk. I cannot dance. I cannot. I can talk. I cannot dance. No, and then well, I used to live in Bruges, where there are actually two Irish pubs. How fantastic is that? Um... And where I used to hang out at the Irish pub, I really kind of liked the owner bartender. Hmm. He was a charmer. <laughs> I do the toe tapping. I do the toe tapping, and I and I and I shake my head. <laughs> but um, that's how far I, how far I will go. <laughs> Oh, no, I feel very self-conscious when I dance, and, um, okay, you guys don't make fun of me, right? I cannot remember sequences of movements, like, dances have, like, uh, you know, left, right, uh, a turn, left, turn, right, whatever. I cannot remember that. For the life of me, I cannot remember that. I used to be, I used to do aerobics and I had to look at the teacher all the time because I could not remember the sequence of the movements. I am hopeless. I love folk music. I love folk dancing, but I cannot do it because I cannot remember the steps. <laughs> just, I am hopeless. It's it's embarrassing how bad I am at it. So I feel very self-conscious. So I don't dance. <laughs> I only dance at home. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, don't get me started, Alice. If I dare to do another project in between i forgot the sequence of the stitches of the pro, pro of the project i did before i 
I need my pattern next to me. And if I talk too much, I completely forgot the steps. I'm lucky I know how to do a double crochet by art. <laughs> I am hopeless. And probably that's why I am very good at following patterns. <laughs> Boy, my memory right now, I used to have such a good memory, but now my memory is crap. Don't ask me what I ate the day before yesterday. I don't know. But I have a huge library of song lyrics in my head that is completely useless. But yes, I am very good at lyrics. I can remember um dialogues from movies and tv shows but don't ask me how to start this little fella i don't remember yeah i'm bad i'm really bad i know it's embarrassing how bad i am but i have fibromyalgia and there's something called fibro fog and i'll blame it on that and that's that <laughs> Oh, uh, I know, I know. I know I'm funny. It's um it's really bad. But at least I know it and I admit it. <laughs> like, but really seriously, I would love to do folk dancing. I think it's so fun. I love folk music. And when I see the people dance, I just want to join. <laughs> But unless I have someone who doesn't get upset at me for not being able to remember when to turn. <laughs> I'll pass. <sighs> I like to I like to um I like to blame my cleaning my my lack of cleaning skills on my um my OCD as well. Though I have, I have to admit, I had to learn how to half-ass things. Um, no, I'm not joking about the, the fog. Actually, the fibro fog is a very common thing, and I am, I am seriously hit by it. The fibro, the fibro fog is really not being able to remember short time things short term things and like you you must have noticed how sometimes i cannot um <laughs> find the words i'm looking for where i'm um, no it's 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 a real thing okay if you leave alice and you don't make fun of me let's do it oh boy but um the ocd thing as as well yeah i had to learn that when I'm cleaning the house, um, I can just vacuum around the furniture and I don't have to move it all to clean behind it. That That's acceptable. No, really. Just like with painting, there is a certain point where you have to accept that what you did is the best you can do. And doing the best you can do is better than half-assing something. Or than to be disappointed because you didn't get to do it the way you wanted to do. There you go. That's my sound advice for today. Well, Alice, you just... Um, Why, thank you. I love my shelves as well. And um, they are very messy about from here. <laughs> no, they're not, actually. It, it's okay. It's not that messy. But this is all seed beads. And these are also beads and beads and books about beads. And I'm not going to show you the other yarn, the yarn here. I'm not going to show you the yarn over there because that's a big mess. Yeah, it's organized. What you see on camera is organized. <laughs> Also, you don't want to see this side of the room. <laughs> Do I like beads, Mary Bell? Do I? Look at my Swarovskis. 
Also, I'm not showing you my desk. <clears throat> I saw your uh, challenge, by the way, Alice. On um, yeah, sorry if I come across a little bit stalker, stalker like on TikTok, but <laughs> I haven't been on TikTok in ages. I went on there to sub to you, and then um, TikTok decided that I had to watch all of your posts so i had like a succession of all your posts so um i'm sorry that i stalked you a little bit but no i'm not doing the challenge where you ask people to show their workspace that's not gonna happen nope 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 who's the beatsmith i wish see that's another thing that i i dabbled in is uh lamp work a beat. Ah, oh, that's fun. I like everything that has to do with... I'm a little bit of a pyromaniac. I like everything that has to do with fire. So the silversmithing and the glass, the lamp work with, with an open flame. So much fun. So much fun. <laughs> yeah, I have stuff and beats everywhere. I have finished projects. That need to be photographed. Uh, and this is just a little bit of a beat. I, my whole wall in front of me is like all the findings, like the clasps and uh, cord clasps and earring things and crimping beads and rings. <laughs> I think it's um, cats and catchers. I'm not sure. But I have not made a video. I really need to study on how to work with TikTok. Oh my gosh, I feel so... I feel so out of the loop. I'm not going to say I feel old. Because that's not it. I feel like... Technology has left me behind and, and went like full speed ahead. And I'm like, wait, what? How does this work? So I managed to figure out Instagram, but TikTok is a whole other level. I'm not sure. Where's my phone? Let me check. Well, you know, I'm the one that liked like 10 of your posts. <laughs> No, I think your TikToks are great, Alice. You're doing a great job. But I have not figured out the how to use the effects and the filming and very confusing. Um, well, thank you. I got an email to say that I'm live. That's always very helpful. Where is my TikTok? Ooh. Um. Oh, apparently I have no name. I have like a ridiculously long sequence of numbers and letters. <laughs> What do you mean? Shadow banned with too many likes? If people like you too much, you get banned? What kind of stupid thing is that? Wait. Can I choose my name? Okay, let me just change my name real, real fast. Yay! I officially changed my name to Cat's Eye Catchers. See, I didn't even realize that my name was DY3IJX550TQ8. Sounds like one of the children of Elon Musk. <laughs> uh, uh. <sighs> 
<clears throat> Seriously, TikTok doesn't know what to do to not pay people for the success they have. There was this girl on, on, on the radio this week. She's a Flemish girl, and I don't... Uh, why am I bold? Um, and she's a... Um, how how they call it these days well she's a she's a call girl but um these days the the correct the politically correct name in belgium for someone who does that <laughs> um is a sex worker so she's a she's a call girl and apparently she in march or something she started a a, a tiktok where she answered questions she got from people. And it wasn't just about her life as a call girl, but it apparently seemed to... Why, thank you, Alice. <laughs> Not that I have any content for now. Um, she answered... She apparently got a whole lot of questions about sexuality from young people as well. And she got banned. She got banned. She got really successful in no time, and she got banned for her context. Got, got flagged, but even the things that did not have anything to do with sex. And she got flagged, and she got banned, but I am sure that TikTok just does that so they don't have to pay her, because she's, she's uh, getting really big. Yeah, but seriously, Elon Musk, like, I do kind of admire the dude but at the same time he's unhinged and really the name he gives his children it's bad so I thought I was very witty there not bold <laughs> oh well, thank you, Alice. If it wasn't for you, I would never have realized that I had the most bizarre <laughs> name on TikTok. <laughs> oh. I was actually trying to find these filters that you also get on Instagram that, that do like your makeup in a second something like that for for <laughs> reggie's pictures for the for the hats and i really uh <laughs> my numbers won't sag mm. <laughs> well actually my numbers on youtube sag is like um, the procession of Ecternog is where they go two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. The whole procession like that. And my YouTube is like that. I, I gain five subs and I lose six. <laughs> okay, Francie, have a good evening. Slap lekker straks. Bye bye. Yeah, I'm gonna... Oh, I've been on for two hours again. Gee, time goes fast. Um, Passover? I don't know, I'm not Jewish, but isn't that around Easter? Reggie is not here. I don't know. Um, anyone else who knows when Passover is? I know you're not supposed to have anything that has yeast in it that is fermented on Passover, but I do not know when it is. Also, Easter is this Sunday, right? Is it your fault? But no, you're not the one making me talk like a crazy lady all to myself. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's how it feels like. Have you ever done a, a life a live chat? When you come to think of it, you're just talking to your computer and it's it's really it's really weird. <laughs> well, Alice, I'm very grateful for your conversation because otherwise I would just sit here. <laughs> yeah. 
It's a good thing I have no fear of public speaking. Um, well, doing demonstrations every 20 minutes for a full room of people. Um, that kind of... Uh, well, I don't think you monopolize the chat. If anyone wants to put in a word, they can. Yeah, I used to do demonstrations on how to make uh, pralines, chocolates. And uh, that got rid of my fear of public speaking. <laughs> yeah, on chats, I like to be on the keyboard because you can also tag people. I cannot tag people on my phone when I'm chatting on my phone. And um, if someone asks to pull up a link, I have to close the app and I miss a bit of the chat on my phone. It's really annoying that Facebook doesn't let you play in the background. Nice. I am a baker as well. I never liked doing the bakery. I liked the patisserie. But I was a chocolate girl all the way. I love doing chocolate. Chocolates. Chocolate was my... See, again... You can learn it all, but if you have an affinity for something, you usually like something better than another. And I had the affinity for the chocolate, not so much for the the bread and the and the bakery. I like eating that. I don't like making that. <laughs> yeah. I think talent and preference have a lot to do with each other. Also, like, um, I've all, I, I also had people in school that didn't like to work with chocolate. They didn't like that. Let's call it a medium. I don't like dough. I don't like dough to stick on my fingers. I, I know that sounds very... Again, it, it it comes across as being very ironic, but I cannot stand things sticking to my fingers. Things like dough. I don't mind greasy fingers, but I cannot handle sticky hands. I know I'm a chocolatier. I don't like sticky hands. And the worst feeling I'm... Ugh. See, it's like I'm feeling it. It's, it's, ugh. it's making me uncomfortable. I hate dough sticking to my fingers and my hands. But hey, okay. Um. <laughs> what? You are leaving me for another? Oh, Alice, my heart is broken. Have a good evening, my friend. Have a good evening, love. <laughs> Love you too. Bye. I don't know who else is left in the chat. Um, give a yell so I can say goodbye to you. Oh, Chris, you want me to to hang around? You blah 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 blah. Okay, so now the Tom Collins is talking. Do you want me to hang out a little bit longer with you? Now I'm getting smacked in the face, not sticked in the, stuck in the face, but kicked in the face by a slice of lemon. <laughs> so a private chat, huh? A private public chat, Chris. <laughs> But you're gonna have to 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 uh, ramble as much as Alice did. <laughs> I don't know who else is still in though, because it says three. I don't know. <laughs> uh. So um. What is your um, conversational trigger? Like Alice, when you start talking about talent and skill, <laughs> you get her going. 
Uh, do you have any um, talents? <laughs> she doesn't like me using that word. We were talking about um, um, skills and things you got from your parents or not from your parents. Did you inherit any talents? I do wonder who the three viewers are. Maybe it counts me as one. Don't know. It's unbelievable how fast um, the time you think you did what? Talk a lot? Yeah, is it morning for you? What time zone are you in? Yeah, I cannot I cannot um function on only one cup of coffee either. I need at least two. But at night I don't have I don't drink coffee at night though. Afternoon I I'm done. Ooh, you got up late. Uh, eight o'clock. So, if you're in Eastern time, it's two o'clock. Three o'clock for Central. Okay, so you're West Coast. No. You're West Coast? Oh, tell me about it. Waking up, I feel like a zombie. <laughs> I feel like a zombie most days. Oh, it's so hard to open my um my eye. Oh, my ex-husband was from um Los Angeles. Um, I think my ex um mother-in-law still lives either in San Diego or in um uh, Los Angeles. Here it's uh, eight eight thirty at night. I had a pretty hectic day. Um, he's from here, from Belgium. Well, we're not married, but um, yeah, and we live near the town of Ghent. I don't know. Have you ever visited Europe? Have you visited Belgium? I doubt it because. It's so tiny, you walk by it before you realize. Uh, no, he's from here. Um, I would never have thought that the cultural differences between Europeans and Americans would be this big. It is very different. More different than I, um, I realized. What time are you, uh, Maribel? I think you're in central time, no? But with the fact that um, I used to have a long distance relationship with an uh, Angelino, I am very familiar with the time difference. So it's not that hard for me to, to, to switch. Six, oh no, so you're, you're east coast, Maribel. Yes, I have been very often. I have been in Los Angeles a few times. Um, usually when we went to Los Angeles, we went to visit a friend in Las Vegas as well. I've been to... Yeah, I've been to San Diego, but I haven't really visited it more than the shore line thingy, which was really, really nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, so can... Connecticut Eastern, okay. And I have been in uh, Florida, which I really liked, but that's it. I still want to visit so much. I like the States a lot, though I would not want to live there. Um, 
which seems a very weird concept for most of the Americans I met. <laughs> um, it was very odd to them that my dream was not to move to the States. Um, um, there are many reasons why I wouldn't want to live in the States, why I like living where I do. But I do miss the food. Oh boy, do I miss the food. <laughs> Again, maybe it's a good thing I do not live in the States. <laughs> oh. But like I said, there are some really, really big cultural differences more than than more than we realize. Because you have to to understand that we grow up watching American TV shows and we think that we know what American is, America is. But of course, TV shows is not the real life. So it's, it's, it's very confusing. Yeah, still, Chris, um, the American dream still is real. And I understand why. I really do. But um, I'm not going to start a political a political discussion. But um, I, for one, am... Okay, let me just say that um, the term socialism um, has been misunderstood and misused a lot. The... Socialism is not equal to communism, but we live in a socialist system and that is something I would not want to let go of. Yes, we do pay a lot of taxes, but we have social security, we have unemployment, we have um, low um, health care costs, we have uh, cheap... Um, education, schooling systems, things like that. And that is something that I, that is very comfortable to know that if something happens, um, that is not going to ruin you or that uh, if you don't have a very successful career and you get to put money aside to have that safety net, well, you have it here automatically. And that is something that I would be in a constant panic not having. So I'm um, like I said, I don't I don't want to start a, a political discussion at all. But that is absolutely one thing that keeps me here. And there are a lot of Belgians who will disagree with me, who um think we pay too much taxes and it's not worth it all to them. Um but see, that is one of the main reasons why I would never leave here. Um, again, a lot of people would leave here. Um, so, but I really, really do love being in the States. Absolutely. I love the United States. I love how big it is. I love the diversity. I love... Um, how friendly and and welcoming most, you cannot generalize, but how Americans are. It's really, after my first trip to America, I came back and you have to know that from all Europeans, from Belgians is always, and especially Flemish people, they always say how warm and welcoming we are. No. No, when you come back from the States, you realize what a bunch of stuck-up, cold, arrogant people we are. <laughs> really, I felt so unwelcome in my own country when I came back the first time. So, I guess it's all, it's, it's how you look at it, I guess. But, um... I don't think you could imagine a place in the United States where um, you go and sit down at a pub and you have to wait for 20 minutes for someone to come and take your order. That would not exist. But here it does. If they don't want to serve you, they don't see you. 
So. One thing I do not like <laughs> from the States is that tax is not included in the prices. It's so misleading. <laughs> Uh, you always have to think, think. Oh yeah, um, at the store. Oh yeah, I have to add this, uh, and I have to add that. That is um, that I do not like. <laughs> yeah. I do like to experience different cultures and actually that is something I really love about our YouTube family is that we are such an international bunch and you get to talk on a daily basis with people from India and from South America and from North America, Canadians and French people and I love it. I, I, I love the international community and... Um, Oh, okay. There you go. I thought Kentucky as well, right? But I don't know what's to see. Oregon. I do want to visit Oregon. Oh, the nature is so beautiful there. Yep. I really, really, really love that. I, 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 I love to say, oh, I know people in Connecticut. <laughs> I know someone who lives there, yeah? <laughs> Oh, yes, Ireland is on my bucket list. Don't have to go for the good weather, though. Alaska, Delaware, Montana, New Hampshire, and Oregon. Okay. Ah, without the sales tax. Yes, Kentucky is without income tax, I think. There was... And Montana, I was... Um... <laughs> um... I used to tease my ex-husband um, <clears throat> by saying that if I moved to the States, it would be to Montana because there was no taxes there and nature was beautiful. <laughs> also, it's very far from the mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, I don't know how, how, how to cope with uh, North uh, American winters, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh. that I would not be able to cope with I think Ooh. Um, I read um, American Gods well I listened because I listened to the audiobook of American Gods this week and I think it was in Wisconsin I think it was in Wisconsin and it was describing a winter there. And oh my goodness, no, 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 no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. Oh, and also, Chris, whereabouts do you live in uh, in California, north or south? Or because it's a big country, I know, and um, it's also big differences. Uh, Ah, uh, I so would like to visit wine country, and the uh, and and the national parks also. I've never gotten to to do that though, because you know how it goes when you visit family and friends. You well, if you only get to go once a year or something, you have to visit family and friends, and then we always stayed in 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 Los Angeles and and. If it wasn't for that one friend in Las Vegas, I don't think we would have ever, we would ever have left uh, Los Angeles while we were there. Mm. I love how green and foresty Oregon is, though. Like Washington, but you have to take the rain in stride, right? Okay. So, middle concern, North California. Okay. Just to get an idea. I, But then again, I don't know if I could live in the really, really warm climate like San Diego or Texas. Oh, I think it would kill me. But then again, you guys with your air conditioning. 
What I will tell you is that I will never, ever, ever go to Las Vegas in the summertime ever again. Never. Ever. 102 degrees? No. Nope. Nope. I don't, I don't exactly remember the times and the temperature, but at that one time it was midnight and, and it was still like 100 degrees. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Do I have to say that um, I don't dislike Las Vegas? It's such a... It's... It's a unique thing. You have to see it once in your life. You have to see and 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 experience it. Oh, our our climate is what you would call a mild climate. We Belgium is a very tiny uh, country. You drive from west to east in about three hours, three hours and a half. From north to south, it doesn't even take you two hours. It's it's a tiny country. It's near the coast, near the North Sea. So we have kind of um, a sea climate. So um, we really don't get extremes, except for with climate change, we kind of do. But our summers are very mild. I would say... Uh, a normal warm summer, our temperatures are between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. So what is that? Between 80 and... Mm, what is 30 degrees? I don't know. It's just comfortable. It's comfortable and there's usually a breeze. And um, it usually doesn't get really, really hot. But we do have a lot of rain. Because we have a sea climate. But it also means that we have pretty green country. Now, these last few years, we've had some really dry, really warm summers. And we've had more um, heat waves frequently. And a heat wave is when the temperature is over 30 degrees Celsius during i think five consecutive days and it doesn't cool down at night under a certain point but that is very uncomfortable to us because we're not used to it now our winters are usually very wet and the temperatures are around freezing temperature so that's a zero celsius for us that's what 32 degrees fahrenheit so um a little above between zero and 10 degrees it's cold and wet we get colder temperatures at night but it's not extreme and then during the day it warms up and snow happens, but it's really, really not often. When it happens, it's really not big quantities and it doesn't stay for very long, maximum like a week or so. We don't get many storms. Uh, we get storms in uh, autumn, uh, but they're more wind and rain storms. And um, that's basically it. Now with climate change, these things are getting more extreme. We get... Longer periods of frost, we get longer uh, periods of, of dry heat. Or we get floods like we had last summer. But we have a very mild climate, which is... A lot of people complain about the rain, but on the other hand, we have four seasons. I like that. You see nature change. I wouldn't want to live in a country where there's barely any change of seasons. I like the change of the seasons. So, um, I guess you could compare it with, I think you could compare it with the temperatures you got in Connecticut, but not with lots of snow and freezing. <laughs> I talked a lot. <laughs> oh, boy. 
See, this is what I'm talking about when I say I'm talking to myself. I just ramble on. Uh, people like zoned out like 20 minutes ago, but I'm still going. <laughs> I am gonna have to go in like five minutes though, guys, because, um, yes, I am native to Belgium. I am born and bred. I don't know if it's possible that you heard of it, um, but uh, we have a northern part and a southern part of Belgium. <clears throat> and this is, uh, this has to do with, um, um, history. Um, we've been invaded by so many uh, people. We have been um, we've been French, we've been Dutch, we've been Spanish, we've been all kinds of things. But the northern part of the country where I live is Dutch speaking. And then about in half, really in horizontal, there's like a kind of a horizontal line. It's the language separations, language border, and um, the south of Belgium speaks French. There is a cultural difference between the two countries. It's um, mostly a political thing. It's mostly a thing used by politicians to create some strife between the north and south, but there are some differences. We have a very, very, very complex political system with different parliaments etc which i'm not gonna born bore you with but i was gonna say me personally i have my roots all over the country i have grand and great grandparents from all over belgium even from outside of belgium i have some french blood i have some spanish blood but i literally have great grandparents from all all over Belgium and grandparents as well. So I really, truly am a native Belgian. <laughs> I consider myself not as Flemish or Walloon. I am Belgium. I have equal parts French and Dutch speaking grandparents. And that's also why I'm, I'm, I am bilingual or actually trilingual. But um, so, yeah, I am. I think I really I am proud to say I am Belgian and we are known to not be very patriotic and very proud of our country, but I am proud to be. What do you dislike most about uh, Connecticut, Maribel, the four seasons or the cold winters? Oh, that's a hard one. Yes, no. It's crazy when you realize that um, I'm actually living up a whole bunch up north from you. Because um, New York City is at the height of Madrid. And we live quite, quite a bit more north than Madrid. Um, there are two of my favorite Belgian fry dishes. Well, first of all, fries are our are, are, are national dish. I know they're called French fries. There are different theories of where the French comes from, but they're actually considered to be a Belgian invention, and we're very proud of it, and Belgians don't like fr fries to be called French. <laughs> um, we have Flemish stew, and that's beef stewed in... Um, Usually beer with a very dark brown sauce and the, the, the beef is stewed long and slowly so that the meat falls apart. You eat that with fries and mayonnaise because, of course, in Belgium we put mayonnaise on our fries. <laughs> um, and then there's the vol which is actually more of a, a French dish, though. And that's a ragu of chicken and meatballs and mushrooms and it's served in a vol au vent um, pastry which you also eat with fries <laughs> then there's also our belgian endives very good 
Yeah, it is. And um, I I really like uh, Flemish stew. I I would say that of the typical Belgian dishes, maybe the the Belgian endives with uh, with ham and cheese um, is second, but the stew is first. Yeah, I wouldn't say I love the colder. I I don't mind colder weather, but um like when it's really um there's a lot of moisture in the air like with snow. I like the dry cold, but not the wet cold like snow and hail and ugh, no. Nope. Dry cold but cold hurts me physically. Cold hurts me. Um, yeah, see, that's one of my favorite parts of traveling. My favorite things about traveling is trying the local food. Yeah, I can imagine. Also, with all the forest fires you guys had to deal with in the last few years. Oh my, it's horrible. And they are creeping up more north every year, aren't they? See, and that's also one of the things that I love about American food is all the great ethnic foods you guys have. Here in Belgium, forget about it. You cannot find authentic Mexican food. Oh, seriously, I would give not a hand, but I give I would give a lot for a good authentic burrito. Then again, I have been spoiled, I guess, eating the fantastic burritos in Pasadena and California. Oh, it hurts me so bad when you, when you, <laughs> okay, my left pinky, I would, I would, although I use that for my yarn tension. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, it hurts my heart when I see these fires, the people losing their homes, the animals having to flee or not fleeing in time. Australia also. Um, had so, so many bad fires. And then you have countries flooding at the same time. It's, it's, it's crazy and it's heartbreaking. When, um, last summer there were fires in California and, um, we've had flood rains that, um, made the rivers go out of their bedding and, and flooding whole towns. And then you're thinking like, why can't we just send our water to there? But unfortunately, that's not how it works. But even even if in, in Southern, um, Southern Europe, like Greece, Spain, Portugal also were hit really hard with forest fires. Yeah, it's sad. But we are to blame for it, sadly enough. Oh, again, let's not get political. <laughs> let's keep this fun. I am, however, gonna sign out, you guys. Thank you for um, sticking with me for so long. <laughs> it's nine o'clock here. I am getting really tired. Like I said, I've had a very hectic day. And I think uh, bedtime is not gonna... It's not far away. <laughs> uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you for being here. Maribel, Ashura, thank you so much, you guys. I love you all so, so much. I love my YouTube family and friends. Also, I feel like I'm losing my voice a little bit. <clears throat> and before I turn into uh, 
into um, Phoebe with her with her sexy phlegm. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say goodbye. Uh, you guys have a wonderful day on the other side of the pond. Um, this Shira, you have a beautiful night and sweet dreams to you as well. And uh, I will talk to you all later. Bye.